Now tonight, I want you to turn with me to the fourth chapter of John's Gospel, a wonderful story in the life of Jesus Christ. And just one verse of Scripture, and it's a very brief verse, it says, and he must needs go through Samaria. Jesus had been teaching. The scribes and the Pharisees had been listening. They had told him that John the Baptist had just been imprisoned, and he taught as one having authority. And the people came to listen, and he taught in great simplicity so that the common people heard him gladly. And now he has to go back to Galilee. He's down south in Judea. Now he's going to go to Galilee. He doesn't get on a plane. He doesn't get on a bus. He doesn't get in a car. He walks. And while it wasn't a very long distance by today's standards, in those days, that was a long distance to go from Judea up to Galilee. And he was going to Cana. But it says he must needs go through Samaria because, you see, the Samaritans and the Jews didn't get along. They didn't like each other. They avoided each other. The Samaritans had intermarried. They were not pure-blooded. And then they had the Jewish people would always go on the eastern side or they'd go the western side of the Jordan River to avoid going through Samaria. But Jesus, it says, must needs go through Samaria. Why? because Jesus had an appointment there that he was going to keep. That appointment had been made centuries earlier in the council halls of God that he must needs go through Samaria. You know, much of the Bible lands is desert. Water is extremely important. Wells are important. And in Samaria, at the foot of two mountains, was Jacob's well that Jacob had dug. There's not only water that you drink for your physical needs, but there's spiritual water. Jesus said, I am the water of life. Jeremiah said, for my people have committed two evils. They've forsaken me the fountain of living waters and hewed them out cisterns, broken cisterns that can hold no water. In a number of places, the Bible refers to people who have no spiritual water. Ye shall be as the garden that hath no water, says Isaiah, the first chapter. In Zechariah, it says, prisoners of the pit wherein there's no water. 2 Peter 2, 17, these are wells with no water, spiritual water. The Scripture says in Isaiah, but the wicked are like the troubled sea when it cannot rest, whose waters cast up mire and dirt. There's no peace, saith my God, to the wicked. It says that the waters are like our own hearts. Our hearts are troubled and they never rest. I watch the waters. They never seem to rest. They're always moving and disturbed. And God says there's no peace to those who reject God. There's no peace to those who are not living for God. Now, the scarcity of spiritual water throughout the world today is tremendous. People are hungry and thirsty. We read about it in our papers constantly. And people in this country are going to the wrong watering holes, searching for satisfaction, searching for something that only the water of life and the bread of life could meet. And that person is Jesus Christ, who is the water of life and the bread of life. You can go down our streets in the major cities of America and see our young people searching for something. They don't know what. Like that girl at Harvard University. She cried for several days, and finally the psychiatrist said, I can do nothing with her. And so they called for the family to come, and the father and mother came. And she finally blurted out to her father, Father, I want something, but I don't know what it is. And many people are like that. They're searching for something, and they go to all kinds of things, whether it's drink or sex or whatever it is. 
to try to find that answer. Maybe it's money or maybe it's power, whatever it is. But it doesn't really satisfy the deepest longings of our hearts. Searching for something that will bring satisfaction and quench this terrible spiritual thirst that only God can satisfy.